afternoon, Good afternoon, Miss Wells. Is Daddy in office? No, he is in a meeting in the boardroom, but you can go into his office. Miss Small, I'd like you to meet a friend of mine, Michael Thomas. How do you do? Pleased to meet you. Go right in, Mr. Wells will be through in a little while. Thank you very much. Danny? Good morning, Siri. What are you doing here? If you get a working for your father? I'm not, but you ain't supposed well, to. I usually come in and tidy up the place. I like to relax in this nice chair your father has here. I better be going. Uh, Siri, you and your friend could wait in and Mr. Wells won't be long. Could I get you folks some magazine, Siri? Michael, let's go. We'll come back Shirley, here. Siri, what's the hurry? I haven't met your friend, Michael. Thomas. Michael Thomas is the name. Danny, you are a messenger in my father's office. And you have to conduct yourself properly. If I want to introduce you to the gentleman, I would do so. I find you rather out of place. Out of place? Mr. Thomas, could I see you for just one minute in the corridor? Michael, let's go. What's the hurry, Shady? I want to talk to Mr. Thomas. Danny, we are busy and we have no time. Let's go, Michael. Shady, you're behaving as if you're afraid something. Look, Shady. Just give me a minute, let me hear what he has to say. Danny, you could be... Ah, Mr. Thomas, I have something very important to tell you. Yes, Mr. Thomas. Shirley Wells ever tell you about me? No, she never did. You serious about her? Yeah. You tell us, sir? Of course. She likes you? She bring me to meet her father. She will marry you? Look there, Mr. King. You come here to question me or to tell me something important? Yes, but ask a few questions first. Good, you ask enough questions? Now let me hear what you have to say. Shirley Wells, you still live with me. What? Yes, she used to live with me in Calabash Alley as man and wife. You joking? I won't lie. You come up there and ask anybody yourself. I find this hard to believe. How you get a Michi? I used to line by the road and see her when she come in from work. You living in Calabash Alley and you're lying quite in Orange Blossom Avenue? I have a partner in the avenue. And the both of you used to sit down on the bridge and suit girls as they pass. I still don't get it. <laughs> you know how to move or what? Sometimes I just say something like, Good afternoon, darling. Oh, you're looking real smart in that dress. Or sometimes I'd ask for some kind of direction. Or ask for some kind of help or something. All kind of tricks I used to try. One thing would lead to another. And before you could say, Michael Jackson, bam, we together. I find this hard to believe. I mean, the kind of home Shirley came from. I wasn't interested in home. I was interested in she. Yes, as I was telling you. It took me a long time to get in with you. She was a real hard nut to crack. Look, you know something? I believe in proving things, you know. It's all right for you to stand up there and spout a lot of tripe about Shirley. You could prove it. Anytime you get a chance, you come up to Calabash Alley. Check out number 13. Everybody in the barracks know her. I'll think about it. And the next thing. You ever made love to she? Well, I mean, uh, I kissed her a few times, and we... Why you want to know that? <laughs> you know the woman, man. Shirley got three beautiful moods. One right here. The other two. The bikini decided. Hello, Shirley. Sorry to keep you waiting. You're looking nice. Thanks, Daddy. But Miss Small said that you and a gentleman were here. Yes, but Daddy, Danny, take the man through that door to tell him something about me. Ah, Shirley, don't jump to conclusion. I'm not. Danny is all out for revenge and want to spoil my friendship with Michael. 
Is he to be my son-in-law? <laughs> Daddy, now you jump into conclusions. We are just good friends, that's all. I just thought I'd bring him to meet you. I should really say, used to be good friends. Because after he finished talking with Danny, he may not even speak to me again. I don't think Danny will try to muddy your life. I sure you telling him how I live with him in Calabar, shall we? How do you know that? They may be just talking about cricket or something like that. I know. Daddy, if Danny do me that, you should fire him. But Shirley, all right, we'll see. Let's wait and see. Come in. Michael, where's Danny? Well, uh, he, he said he had to see about something in a hurry. Michael, what he say? Gosh, I'm sorry. Daddy, this is the gentleman I told you about, Michael Thomas. Oh, pleased to meet you. How do you do, sir? Thomas. Thomas. Have you ever met before? Uh, I don't think so, sir. The name. What do you do for a little, Mr. Thomas? Oh, well, I, I work for a motor car firm. I test drive cars sometimes. And also, I do a little bit of sales. Do you happen to be a private detective in your spare time? Uh, yes, yes, sir. I know you know. You are the man who informed my wife that I was carrying on with Carl Parker. Daddy! Thomas, you are a nastiness. You have the brass face to come here. Look me in the eye and expect me to smile with you. What? How, how did you know me, sir? My wife mentioned your name to me. And I thought I'll never hear that bloody Michael Thomas again. Daddy! Shirley, I will never approve of you going out with a scamp like this. Look, you, Michael Thomas, hold your tail on my office this minute. Good day, Mr. Wells. Wait, Shirley. No! Very sorry. Not your fault, so don't bother about it. Michael, what Danny tell you? Everything about both of you. Good God. Don't bother about it now. As far as I'm concerned, it makes no difference. But I didn't think your father would know me. Neither me. Otherwise, I would never take that chance. Hmm. Look, let's get out here and go to some quiet place. Huh? But not too far. I have to be back home in time for lunch. I don't want mommy to suspect I have a boyfriend. That's right. You better keep it a secret, eh? You don't make one big mistake already. Say that again. Come in. Where is you, Danny? Yes, sir. I come to collect my salary and to thank you for all that you did for me. What happened, Danny? Well, I know you're going to fire me, so... For what? For telling that Thomas fellow all about Shirley and me. That is what you do? Yes, sir. <laughs> you should be promoted. I hope he leaves Shirley now. But I thought that... That is the man who tell my wife that I was going wrong with Carol Parker. He? Yes, Michael Thomas. May the devil take his soul. He is a private detective that makes his money macoing people. Oh, I know, see. When I see that man staring me with his two big eyes, I felt like taking this paper away and letting him have it straight between the eyes. <laughs> I, for one, would be glad if it had parties come. Ah, Danny, like a jealousy man. I ain't no way to say. Eh? But I get blasted, Vex, when I see him skinning with Chili. It get me sick. <laughs> He's a nasty dog. I must get even with him. I feel so too. I feel like cutting his tail. But a man must learn to exercise self-control. You could get yourself in trouble. I'll get a gang to do it for me. A gang? Yes. It has some hooligans living out by me. They call themselves the chain gang. Them fellas will do anything for money. Plenty trouble in that. But how you know about them? Well, I almost joined up with them when I wasn't working. It have a fella. He joined them when he was out of work. And he was encouraging me. But I, can't, I don't like them kind of thing. How much should I charge to beat a man? It depends on what you want them to do. The last job I hear about, they charge only 1500 
And the lady was only too willing to pay it. A lady? Yes, na. And a big shutter besides. She wanted her husband beat up because he was going around with the secretary. But she didn't want him beat up too bad. Just a few coughs and kick. And one boss said, That bastard Thomas definitely deserved that sort of thing. But I'll wait and see what happens first. If Shirley should come and say she want to marry him, I will definitely hire the chain gang to bust his tail. <laughs> and I would be only too willing to get them to do it. Thanks, Danny. Now, I was writing a little love verse for Carol. How things with you all? Yes, good news. I get her to agree to make back with you. She said the next time you ask her out, she'll definitely go. Ah, yes. I feel so good. Now, hear this one. It was written in the stars that we were meant for each other. So how can both of us escape the inevitable? <laughs> how you like that? <laughs> it sound good, but I know what it mean. You think I will know? She might. What about um? I love you beyond reason, beyond measure, beyond love's own power of loving. Yes, that sounds good, but why you don't tell her you love her in Creole? Tell her something like, Carl, I love you. Like, hug, love, mud. Great! But it needs another line. Something to rhyme with mud. Ah, yes. Carl, I love you like hug, love, mud. So don't leave me. Chewing my cud. <laughs> <laughs> she bumped to wake up with you after that. <laughs>